in the workshop, mounting a copper boiler for the Stuart Models beam engine on a suitable base and making it work, part two. Here's a piece of copper tubing that I'm going to use to make the condenser. It needs to be this size because if it was any smaller it would need emptying too frequently and there is no possible way I can mount this condenser on the board anywhere near the boiler. Here's a thinner brass tube and it's not going to look right no matter where I put it it's either going to have to be very small and ineffective or it's going to look really stupid. What I propose to do is make a condenser and fit it to the engine which is more like full size practice. I was once invited to look at this engine in an engine house, a big mill engine, and right alongside it was the condenser. And if it's good enough for the full size, it's good enough for the small ones. I'm going to put the condenser right alongside the engine. I tried it in an upright position and that didn't look right. In this clip I'm removing the exhaust manifold so I can get the piece of copper pipe closer to the engine. Whichever way I look at this though, the condenser does not look right in a vertical plane. It's far too tall and it looks wrong. But when I put the condenser in this position, it's obvious where it needs to go. This is a bit of dead area on the baseboard, so I'll make a condenser and put it here. This condenser is going to be very similar to one that I made for a steam plant that I constructed a short while back. It's just a bit smaller and I'm going to paint it green to match the engine. I went to see my friends at Blackgates Engineering because I needed to do a little bit of shopping. And while I was there, I was chatting to another customer who travelled all the way from East Yorkshire to get some parts from Blackgates Engineering. The first thing out of the bag is a quarter by 40 5mm glass water gauge, followed by another quarter by 40 5mm glass water gauge. These superb water gauges are made in West Yorkshire, quite close to here really. I always use this type of water gauge because they work. And while I was at Blackgates, I bought a pressure gauge, and I bought a one inch pressure gauge. I bought the bigger pressure gauge so I can read the dial, because as I'm getting older and I'm 65 in January, quite a few of my body parts, including my eyes, are not working as well as they used to do. When I think about it these days, there's only really death left to look forward to. And now that I've cheered up everybody over the age of 65, I'm going to fit the water gauge to the boiler. It's very important to make sure that the top and bottom fittings of a water gauge are perfectly aligned. And to do this, I'm using some things called shim washers, which are just copper washers in various thicknesses, and generally I would buy these as a set. This part of the job can take quite a while to complete. Eventually, I get the correct combination of shim washers to make the fitting sit in the right position. Unfortunately, I can't find a spanner that will fit the hexagon part of the top fitting. But never mind, I will use my Barco spanner. But a word of caution, if you're doing this, always make sure that the top brass nut is fitted in position, because if it isn't, you may distort the water gauge tube when you use the adjustable spanner on the fitting in this way. And if that happens, you will not be able to fit the top cap, so you will have to go and buy another water gauge. That's not why I bought two water gauges, by the way. I bought the other water gauge just so that I had one in stock. In any case, I don't recommend doing it this way. You should really look through your collection of spanners and find one the right size to fit the hexagon part of the water gauge fitting. The problem is it removes the paint and looks unsightly. But using a barco adjustable spanner as I've just shown on the main fitting also damages the paint. So it's a lose-lose situation. This paint is going to get damaged during the fitting process. I find it really difficult not to damage the paint on these fittings. Often I remove the paint altogether by sitting the fittings in a bath of cellulose thinners for a while and then I polish up the fittings. Here is a shot of a bottle of Loctite 542 thread sealant and I always use this stuff to seal the threads on all of my boiler fitting installations. The bottom fitting was much easier to align than the top one. It really is look of the drawer, it depends where the threads sit on the actual fittings. The glass is too long, so I'm going to have to shorten it. And how do I do that? I just use a sharp-edged needle file. I did buy an actual tool to do this job, but I made a video about it and then promptly lost it, and it works very well. All I do is file a groove on the glass where I want it to break. Not all the way round, just halfway round. And then by using a barco spanner, I just snap it off. Watch. Easy. Health and safety notices. Two health and safety notices to be exact. When cutting glass in this way and breaking it off with a barco spanner, it's a good idea to wear eye protection. That is common sense and that is serious. 
and the second health and safety warning is just to warn you that a broken edge of a glass tube is very sharp, so during the fitting process, handle with care. Common sense, really. If you're really frightened about this, you could always heat the end of the glass tube with a blowtorch, and this will get rid of the sharp edges. Now it's time to fit the clack valve, and the principle is exactly the same. First of all, put a washer on and see where it sits. No, that's no good at all. Then try a thinner washer. No, that's no good either. Now I've selected two copper washers of different thicknesses, and as you can see, the clack valve remains in the wrong position. But another go with two different thickness washers, I get the right combination, and the clack valve is in the perfect position and can be fitted in place using some Loctite 542. The only pressure gauge siphon I could find in my box of bits was a broken one. And this is broken because it's not very good. I'm going to make another one. But for the purposes of the video and to allow me to steam test the boiler, I used this one. I had to drill down the end of the copper pipe to silver solder the union fitting on the top. But I can't live with this, it's too weak. I'm going to modify it before the boiler plant is finished. In this clip, I'm fitting the pressure gauge. And it's a lovely pressure gauge, but it is too big. It doesn't look right, it's absolutely massive. Everything has to be in scale, so I had a quick look in my box of old assorted pressure gauges and found this one. It's a three quarters of an inch one, and you can see it's much smaller. And when I fitted that, it looks much better. And thankfully, someone has put a red line at the working pressure that I need. I'm now pumping it up with air. It's best to pump up with air first in case there's a problem. Time now for a proper steam test to see how the boiler goes on. I'm going to connect it to the beam engine so I can run the beam engine and also I'll be setting the safety valve. I filled the boiler with water right to the top of the water gauge. Now I wouldn't normally do this but I haven't fitted the water pump yet so I don't have any means of getting water into the boiler that's why I filled it initially right to the top of the glass. The first of the problems makes itself apparent immediately. With the water gauge fitted it's right above the heat source, so what's happening is the heat from the burner is trying to boil the water in the water gauge, and this is not a good idea. So I've fitted a temporary heat shield to stop this happening, just using a piece of bent brass. This is a temporary measure, and I think the solution is probably to move the gas burner closer to the boiler, or I could machine a piece of brass tubing to fit over the existing flue tube to just extend it. The boiler raises steam fairly quickly, I'm quite pleased with it, because the burner wouldn't win any prizes for being the most ferocious gas burner I've ever seen. There is no pressure showing on the gauge, but there is some steam in the boiler, so what I'm doing is taking this opportunity to warm up the engine. And surprisingly, it starts to work. I've put a long extension tube on the exhaust to pipe away all the mess that's going to come out of the exhaust pipe. And this makes a very strange gurgling noise because of the condensed water gurgling up the pipe. This will not be the case once I build the condenser for the engine. The creaking noise that you may hear from time to time is definitely not coming from the engine or the boiler, it's coming from the buffet that I'm sat on that is creaking under my weight. In this clip I'm adjusting the safety valve, and for this I'm using a pair of circlet pliers which go into the holes. First of all, I slacken off the outer ring, which is like a lock nut, and then by turning the inner ring, that adjusts the blow-off point. The boiler is currently blowing off just under 50 pounds per square inch. I think that I would like it to blow off just over 50 pounds per square inch. Then it would drop down to 50 for general running. This beam engine runs at a realistic speed on an amazingly small amount of steam, so this boiler is going to be more than adequate to run it. In this clip, I'm moving the position of the extension to the exhaust pipe, and this is an attempt to get rid of some of the water that's in there that's making the gurgling noise. The engine itself is almost silent, so this is going to be a very successful and very pleasant steam plant to run. So what was originally designed to be a two-part series is going to be slightly longer, I need to make the condenser for the steam engine, and I need to do something with the boiler mounting base. I have a good idea for this that may look quite good. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.